Aside from the problem of perspectives, the talk course is really about two questions. What do we know and how do we know it? In answer to those two questions, the sceptical challenge claims that we don't have knowledge, or at least the belief that we do is misguided. One form of that sceptical challenge is the illusion argument that has particular relevance for uh, scientific knowledge since scientific knowledge is fundamentally based upon sense experience we have of the physical world. I usually begin this topic by asking two questions. Can you ever think of a time where your senses have made a mistake? And secondly, what was it that made you realise that initial error? Living in Lima, one example that springs to mind is whenever you drive north or south along the coastal desert on the Panamericana. In the distance, often you will see what appears to be water on the road. When you get closer to that location, you'll realise that that initial sense experience or sense perception of water was in fact a mirage or an illusion. Now I know, firstly from memory, I've had those experiences before, that that initial sense perception is in fact a mirage. I also know, because of refraction, a theory that is described by physics, that the illusion is a result of the way light behaves as it moves between different mediums, in this case air, hot air and cooler air. That nice example serves to show that mind-dependent theories, concepts and schema interpret our raw sense data. As a result, we have perception. So, without further ado, let me go into the PowerPoint and explain further what I'm talking about. Descartes' project when he wrote his meditations was to find the certainty upon which he could build his theory of knowledge. And his approach in doing this is to adopt a sceptical methodology, also known as the method of doubt. In order to understand this, we can use the analogy of Descartes, which is the basket of apples analogy. And the idea is when you're harvesting apples, when you store them for the winter, you don't want to include any bad or rotten apples in the store because they're likely to rot and affect good apples. So he says the best way to ensure that your store contains no bad apples is to first of all empty it completely and then put back only the good apples. So the analogy is used for his ideas and his approach is to empty his mind of all ideas and then put back only the ideas of which he is certain. So the first set of ideas that Descartes chooses to examine are those derived from sense experience. And he thinks to himself that in the past, information gained from sense experience has sometimes deceived him. For example, when it's dark and he can't see well, maybe when it's foggy, and maybe even audible illusions uh, if there's a lot of noise or maybe he's had too much to drink. And Descartes thinks to himself, well, it's always wise never to trust anybody completely who has deceived or fooled you in the past. And he applies this same logic to sense experience. The conclusion of this line of thinking, therefore, is that ideas or knowledge gained from sense experience cannot be the certainty which he's looking for. The purpose of this film, then, is to investigate a little bit further the illusion argument and really to ask, what does the illusion argument reveal about the nature of our knowledge of the physical world? We can also investigate the illusion argument in terms of its consequences. What does it reveal about the nature of perception in that perception is raw sense experience of the physical world organized according to mind dependent concepts. We can also then link back to Descartes' quest for certainty and whether that is a possibility in the natural sciences. Finally, I think it's also worth mentioning that the illusion argument goes some way to explaining why there are different perspectives and different perspectives of the physical world. In the two photographs, you have images of a pencil and a pen half submerged in water. What you can't escape 
is the sense experience that the pen and the pencil appear to be bent. However, we know from memory and from knowledge of refraction that the pen is in fact straight. The problem for sense perception is that you cannot skip the perception that the pencil appears bent. The interesting thing in terms of knowledge about the world is that your raw sense experience, your visual perception of the pencil is that it is bent. However, you know that it is straight. Again, going back to memory, you might know this because you've seen this before. You take the pencil out and you remember that it's straight. And secondly, you also understand refraction. We'll get to that later. The example of the pencil half submerged water and the visual illusion of it being bent when we know it's straight is a great illustration of two theories of perception. The first theory of perception, direct realism, is realism. So the real world exists. Uh, sometimes called common sense realism. So it exists exactly the way we perceive it. So for example, if you're looking at a tree, the tree really is green, it really is 10 meters high, and it really is 20 meters in front of you. The problem of direct realism is when it comes to illusions. So if we go back to the example of the pencil half submerged in water, direct realism does not allow us to accommodate for the fact that it appears bent, but in fact, we know it is really straight. An alternative to direct realism is indirect realism. Indirect realism is another version of realism, stating that the physical world really does exist. However, different to direct realism, we experience the physical world indirectly because the information of the physical world is delivered to our minds as raw sense data from our senses. Importantly, this raw sense data is then understood or interpreted by mind-dependent concepts and schema. The advantage of indirect realism is that it allows us to accommodate for illusions. The half-submerged pencil in water appears bent, yet we understand that is a straight pencil that appears bent and its straightness is explained really due to the theory of refraction. As light moves through different material, in this case water, glass and air, the light refracts or bends. We don't see the raw sense data of the light refracting. Light moves far too quickly to see that. However, what we do see is the consequences of that refraction. So the pencil that is half submerged in water appears to bend. Therefore, going back to the theories of perception, indirect realism is superior to direct realism because it is able to explain why what appear to be illusions are in fact illusions because there is a intermediary stage. The raw sense data is delivered to our minds, which then organize and understand that raw sense data according to the mind-dependent concepts and theories that we have. One of the consequences of the illusion argument is we can begin to explain why different people perceive the world differently. So if we take the example of a duck bunny, when you look at this image, you can see either a duck facing to the side or a bunny facing upwards. Now the image itself doesn't change. What changes is your perception or the way you interpret that image according to which concept you are organizing that image, the concept being in your mind. As a final point, going back to Descartes initial objective of finding that certainty which would function as a foundation for his whole knowledge system, the illusion argument shows us that that foundation cannot be knowledge derived from sense experience. As an aside, Descartes eventually did claim that he had certainty and that foundation was based upon his own existence, I think therefore I am, and later on God's existence. However, both of those arguments are problematic and I don't really have the time to discuss those here. Another option is to think of knowledge as 
a coherent set of mutually supportive knowledge clips. This is best represented as a fishing net where the ties on the net are the knowledge claims and they all work together in a mutually supportive network. The big advantage of this theory of knowledge is that there is no requirement of finding any absolute certainty to be the basis of the whole knowledge system. The drawback, however, is since none of the knowledge claims have any absolute or philosophical certainty, it's quite possible that a different set of coherent knowledge claims could be more valid, correct, or preferable to any other set of mutually supportive knowledge claims. And that concludes what is rather a short introduction to scepticism and its challenge to knowledge, and a form of that challenge which is the illusion argument. As always, Thank you very much for watching, please add your comments below and lastly, don't forget to smash the like button.